In this video, I'll go over setting up Sterling PDF on a Synology NAS using Container Manager. Sterling PDF is a self-hosted, web-based PDF manipulation tool which allows you to edit PDF files and gives you functionality you would normally get from a paid application, like being able to convert PDFs to Word documents, adding images to a PDF, and detecting text from images within a PDF. Sterling PDF also takes security into consideration and makes no outbound calls, so you can be assured that sensitive documents aren't being tracked. When working with Sterling PDF, the file you need to edit is uploaded to your Synology NAS where it resides in memory. Then, when you finish your edits and download the file, it is deleted from the memory of your NAS completely. To learn more about Sterling PDF, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. Let's get to configuring Sterling PDF and we'll begin by making sure Container Manager is installed from the Package Center. If it isn't, make sure to install the package before moving on. Once Container Manager is installed, you'll want to bring up FileStation, then you'll want to create a Sterling PDF folder within the Docker Shared folder. You'll then want to create a Training Data and Extra Config subfolder within the Sterling PDF folder. Now I'll bring up Container Manager. Select Project and click Create to start up the Create Project Wizard. Here I'll give the project a name. Set the path to the Sterling PDF folder that was created earlier. Then for Source, I'll select Create Docker Compose.yaml and paste in this pre-configured YAML setup, which I'll include in the description below. Before continuing, I just wanted to mention a few things about the configuration. First, the host port number that I'll be using to access the container is 8080. If, however, you already have a container or service using that port number, you'll need to change it to an unused host port number instead. Under Volumes, I've set up the training data and extra config subfolders that were created earlier to map to the test data and configs folder within the container. You could also do custom branding and setup logging by setting up a custom files and logs volume if you would like, but in my case, I'm going to leave both options commented out because I don't need that in my setup. Under environment, I've enabled additional security and a login in my setup, but if you don't want or need that, you could set both options to false and you'll go directly to the Sterling PDF main screen when you bring up the application in your browser. At this point, I'm ready to continue with the setup, so I'll click Next. Next once again on this Web Portal Settings window. And finally, click Done to complete the setup and start up the project. While the container is being built, if you've gotten value from this video so far, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like this type of content. Now that the project finished building and started up successfully, I'll bring up another browser tab and enter in the IP address of my Synology NAS along with port 8080 to bring up the Sterling PDF login window. Here I'll log in with the default username of admin and the default password of Sterling, all in lowercase, and sign in. Once logged in, you'll be prompted to change the admin password as well as the username if you would like. For me, I'll just change the password for the admin user and click Submit to save the changes. Then I'll log in again as admin with the new password. At this point, you can also add additional users if you would like by going to Settings, Account Settings, then click on Admin Settings, View, and Add Users. Here you would assign the new user a username, password, and role. You can also force the user to change username or password if you would like. In my case, I won't add a new user and I'll start using Sterling PDF by bringing up the home page and select a feature I would like to use. As an example, I'd like to convert this What is Sterling PDF web page to a PDF, so I'll copy the URL. Then back in Sterling PDF, I'll search for a feature that would allow me to do the conversion and select the URL slash website to PDF option. I'll then paste in the URL that I just copied and click Convert to create a PDF from the web page. Once the conversion is completed, 
I'll download the PDF to my computer, then bring it up in my PDF Viewer application where we can see that the web page was converted to a PDF just fine. Now let's say I want to add page numbers to the PDF that was just created. To do that, I would bring up the Sterling PDF homepage once again, then search for the feature to add page numbers and select the option. Now I'll choose the PDF that was just created, and I'll add the page number to the bottom right corner, leaving the rest of the options as is, then click Add Page Number to complete the process. Once done, I'll download the file by clicking Allow on this pop-up window, and if I bring up the PDF file that was just downloaded, we can see that it now has page numbers. Hopefully those few examples show you how Sterling PDF works, and I think it is a great application and one I'll keep handy for my PDF needs. Let me know what you think about Sterling PDF in the comments below, and check out some of my other videos listed here on screen. Lastly, if you would like to support my work or hire me for a project, check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.